This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, I'm trying to make Calyx Destiny's hand work. So obviously, we're going to run a lot of enchantments. This Planeswalker that I think many people wanted to be excited about, but just wondered if Planeswalkers could hold it down uh, if they had this much reliance on enchantments. Well, so far in standard, this card's been a bust. Uh, a zero on my crafting guide, you know, do not craft type of thing. But as always, we try to push cards and make them good if we can. So in this case, I have a bit of an Abzan prison list. I think that the best color to pair Calyx up with is a little splash of black because I think that Oath of Kaya is a very good card in the current meta to pair with Calyx. I think that Treacherous Blessing goes on the list too and Ethereal Absolution. One thing that's missing here though is Doom Foretold, which might have been what you players expected. I've already done some Abzan Doom Foretold decks, and while I find them reasonable, I don't like them as much as the Black White or the Esper or the Bant variety. Bant? What? No. Uh, what's another? Mardu. Mardu variety. Um, because, well, Calyx wants the enchantments to stay on the battlefield. If you use the minus three of Calyx, you want the Oath of Kaya that you hide their creature under, or the Wolf Willow Haven, to stay around on the battlefield, not to be sacrificed to Doom Foretold. So instead of Doom Foretold, I'm trying going way over the top with Ethereal Absolution. Four copies. When you start slamming this on turn six, all of their start dying, and yours get buffed. So the eventual win con of the deck can be Archon of Sun's Grace, Satessan Champion, but it can also be making a bunch of 1-1s with Ethereal Absolution and Castle Arden Vale, because those 1-1s might be 4-4s or 5-5s, and you can deliver an epic Ethereal Beatdown. The deck is kind of slow, but it ramps up a little bit with Wolf Willow Haven and gets some early play with Birth of Melitus, so we really need some of those cards early, especially if we are on the draw. But Oath of Kaya tries to buy time, Shatter the Sky, cleans up boards that go too wide, and Archon of Sun's Grace can solo some aggressive strategies all by itself, while Elspeth Conquers Death and Calyx are a really good team when it comes to grinding out the tougher uh, kind of rampy matchups. All right, the mana base has some temples, a whole bunch of lands with the only basics being planes because of the birth and some castles. So uh, I like the mana base. It's almost a green-white deck except for a little bit of splash. So the black isn't that important. We don't have to worry too much about getting multiple blacks. So it lets me play this um, mostly white kind of mana base. All right, let's dive in. Let this nonsense begin. This hand has a Wolf Willow Haven, which is usually exactly what you're looking for to keep an opener. It is a little awkward with Temple and Castle coming in tapped, but we'll try it. Gruel for Life is on the play. I think that bolds poorly for us. But drawing that basic land off the top is pretty great. So here's the question. What are we doing on turn four? Right now, double ramp into Absolution is looking okay. So we will try it. We will try it. Paradise Druid, of course, and now for us, it's just an Absolution. We'll throw it on the Plains, and Absolution, I mean a Haven. The next turn is another Haven and a tapped Overgrown Tomb, probably, but we'll see what we draw. And then these start coming down. Shatter the Sky. That's interesting, considering we're up against two Mana Dorks, and the opponent's probably setting up to play something huge, which Elspeth Conqueror's Death can handle. So do we Ramp or do we Absolute? This is pretty tricky. I actually think I'm going in for a shatter. Let's just slow this down. Ah, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn off the sound effects. I meant to go for that. Too much on my mind. All right. So the opponent has this Bronto. Let's get the Archon onto the battlefield. I'm not as worried about the Bronto on the Wolf Willow Haven or anything. I think I'll be able to catch it later with Elspeth Conquer's death or something, but I'll get them, I'll get this person to get rid of their Bronto somehow. All right, let's throw down the Haven. 
Make a Pegasus. Wonder if the opponent's thinking about blowing up my land. We can save that for after. And let's get the Archon moving. Looking for more enchantments. Pretty much all that we need at this point. I'd love to clean this up before we play an Absolution, but I don't know if that's going to be an option. We need the opponent to tap out. That is a powerful card. So perhaps we'll see an attack from both? Yes. Indeed. So this untapped land is a headache. Ooh, will they tap it? They do! They do a rabid bite. Oh, nice. So now with them tapped out, I could play the Elspeth Conqueror's Death, take out their Brontodon. I really do want to kill the Nyssa with it, though. But it's going to die if that happens. And right now the Nyssa isn't terribly threatening. We should be able to attack it pretty well. The opponent with a ton of mana could play something like a Hydra, but it doesn't bother me much. So we're going to use Elspeth Conqueror's Death. We're going to take out the Brontodon. Going to play the tap land. Going to say go. I'm not in a hurry to attack down the Nyssa. Right now the Archon holding off the 3-3 seems pretty nice. It's a big Hydra. That is a big a uh, boy. Let's see if the opponent has a way to target it to start some fights. Into Henge, okay. Um, bravo, they kicked it into high gear. Their deck went big, which I guess I should have taken a hint from when I played Chatter the Sky. I think that there's not much I wouldn't have done differently in this game, so you'll have to give me a break and call it a warm up. <laughs> I think I would take back everything I've done here, but this card's pretty strong. It also pushes the Archon and Pegasus token to 7, so we can take this off the board. Alright, Nissa down. Let's see what Gorgos can do. Our Elspeth Conqueror's Death goes off next turn, so if they kill the Archon, we get it back. We don't have a ton of things, quite honestly, to get back in this particular deck. Drawing Calyx, we could really use a fourth one, and I haven't been able to bring myself to use a, um, a wild card on it. I'm sure you can't blame me. Okay, we're double gorging. Gargos. Garga Gargos? Like Gargle? Like Gargamel? I don't know. Alright, let's do it again. Absolutely. And you. And that's the scoop. The ethereal absolutions. Temple, temple. It's okay. We've got a shatter, and we've got a birth. And we got a calyx. Calyx, calyx. What do you think? Pretty sure we decided calyx last time. So, the Haven or the Burf? The Haven, if I draw an untapped land, lets me play the Calyx next turn. Set up for success? Eh, let's take our time. The Burf lets me get a wall to defend him. So that can be fine too. What am I talking about? My opponent's gonna thought erase it, right? Have to. Like what else is their deck actually doing? Yeah, always hello before the rudest possible play. <laughs> nope, not this time. I'm wrong. I'm happy to be wrong. It's fine. Alright, we don't want to play a Satessan Champion into a, some kind of a removal spell. I think that this turn is just Wilf Willow Haven. We can scry as well. Another Haven? It's pretty good with a Champion, so yeah, we'll keep it.
quench out of blue black okay our opponent planning to play the rudest possible deck i guess beef of sanity okay well interesting i would love one more land to exile that but we can just shatter this one away Wrecked your ears again. God, I'm I'm forgetful. Yeah, this is super rude Demir. Which, okay, you know, played plenty of Demir in my day. And it's a pretty terrible deck in the meta at the moment, so I can't be upset. Omen of the Sea. I believe they kept their top card, so they know they want one anyway, and they keep both on top. Looking strong. Treacherous Blessing, though, might be very good against their slower draws. Murderous Rider, of course. So now we can go for the Satessan Champion in the Haven. Just to make, try to get an extra card out of our champion and create a board presence. There's the absolution. So they probably know they have to deal with this champion. And they go in for a murderous rider. I feel like they could have done better. Let's see what happens if we play another haven. Does the opponent kill our champion? No. Oh, so they probably don't have a way to remove it here. They might have another quench or another omen. We're going to get something quenched. Let's let it be this Oath of Kaya. Let's get our three cards. Four cards. Sorry. So we could play Birth and let that get quenched, or we could say Go and not play anything into a quench. We could also attack with this champion and see if the Murderous Rider wants to chump for it. And we just play a longer game. Let's see what happens. I would just let the opponent chump block me here if that's what they want. Oh, okay. Super late Brazen Borrower. So do we play this now or next turn? The opponent has proven they don't really have a way to kill it. If we get it down now... The opponent has to find one. Otherwise, they might be able to hit us with a Thought Erasure and take it. Night Veil vale Predator. You. That's a tough one. This attack is probably just for two life. It's They could have a Disfigure, but it seems really unlikely. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine potential mana... So we could do Ethereal Absolution and Oath of Kaya. We could do Archon of Sun's Grace, Birth of Melitus, and Oath of Kaya. That sounds really strong. They're impressed. Of course you are. Of course you're impressed. Don't act like you're not. Last planes from the deck. Just something to keep in mind. So we could offer our opponent the Satessan Champion for the Predator. I'm not into it. This is a card drawing machine, and I'm okay to grind a long game with them. I think I can draw more cards than they will. Which is kind of sad. <laughs> this green this green deck drawing out drawing a blue black deck. That used to be Blue Black's uh, game. Alright, murder, tyrant scorn. Our opponent's going hard. They're trading all of their resources now. I've got plenty more where that came from, although, I don't know. The card advantage well is running a little dry, but let's go ahead and drop the Ethereal Absolution before it can get countered. Draw 
Dry? Jatter? Don't think so. Not really what we're looking for. The castle can start doing the work. I'm sure some of you are tilting a little at our opponents, emoting. They're going a bit off the deep end with it, so take them down a notch. The trees. So if we do it like this, they might take the two cards. They probably won't. But if they take the thief anyway, Ethereal Absolution has it pretty covered, so we're okay. Let's see what they grab. Yeah, they took the thief. When you when you are a thief of sanity player, you what you tend to do is play thief of sanity. <laughs> Deep thoughts, I know. All right, do I exile this? The opponent's going to cast thief, but we can block it pretty well using the ethereal absolution. But still, I think we'll let them play it. Let's drop the castle and say go. The castle can make some two twos. This can make two twos. Elspeth Conqueror's Death can take out the thing that really threatens us the most. Well, it might be this. So let's see what happens. Here, deep below, All right. We're making tokens. Hmm. Make one of those. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we can kill this and make a replacement token. I guess there's some stuff in our graveyard that says exile a card from an opponent's graveyard. Okay. Can't use my own graveyard. Got it. Not really worried about the Ashiok. We're going to beat it down pretty well. So I'll just go ahead and attack it a few times here. One, two, three, four, five can make that. One, two, three, four, five can also make a wolf. So let's play the temple. That's not bad. And do we want to make a wolf token? A three, three? I guess. The tokens start meaning a lot more once Absolution gets rolling. Okay, another Night Vale Predator. Lots of creatures for us to prey upon. Now, does the opponent want to attack here to exile my top card? They saw me keep it. No, they don't. You two go after the Ashiok. You two Ashiok as well, I guess? The opponent can chump, chump, trade, chump. Ashiok goes to one. I'm okay with that. One, two, three, four, five... One, two, three, four, five, and one extra. So we can make another wolf token. Yeah, a few nice exiles for them, but nothing I'll miss too badly. Ashiok down. So we can play a tap land here. I'm still going to hold this back, I think until I have an enchantment to play with it. Well, actually, no. I should probably just run this out. Hmm. Nah, we'll hang on to it. Body Racer is a card, but it can only take one or the other. Here they come. Oh, boy. Multiples. You don't say. Let's eat some graveyard. Bye bye, Ashiak. Oh, I could there was a predator. I could have taken the predator. Oh well. This is br this is oh god. This is disgusting. Extra disgusting.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I'd have scooped there too. Hmm. We have to draw a white source, but we have more white sources than anything else in the deck, and we have a scry land. So if there's a white source in the top two, this hand is just going to be rolling exactly the way I'd want it to, so I'll take that chance. Nope, you're not a white land. Temple the temple action. Milady, milady. There we go. Thought about saving that for the champion very briefly, but I don't think I don't think that's usually worth it. It is a question, like do we slam this next turn? And I think we do, because Calyx is the turn after. So, if they have murderous riders, we'll make them play their murderous riders. They have something. Are they a disfigure gamer? There's enough mono red around here, I don't even blame people if they are. Okay, murderous rider. Hopefully we'll get that back later with an Elspeth Conquers death. A lot of basic planes off the top. Right, another birth to get the last planes out of the deck. Looking floody so far. But does the opponent have another Murderous Rider for Calyx, the Destiny's Hand? If not, we're gonna start ticking away and... <laughs> yep, yep, yep. This hand is okay. We still need to find a Black Source and a few more lands. But I think the deck can handle that. Temple of Silence, our opponent gets it. They've got a black source already. Right at the top. All right. I guess I'm not keeping the blessing right now. Not without a way to cast it. Able Passage, go. Lame. Wolf Willow Haven, go. Next level. So, Black White do nothing. What do you have? Nothing. Well, stick into the blue, the blue nothing, the do nothing theme. Let's get a land lined up for next turn, then play the Temple of Milady. I don't want to do double birth. I want an enchantment to follow the Archon or the Satessin Champion. So that's good. Nothing. So I have a feeling they have an instant speed removal spell. I could go for the champion, but when I go for birth, it will probably die. I could also go for Archon, that will probably die. I could also do nothing and just start playing like Absolutions, but what if they have like Mortifies? Mm hmm. This is an interesting spot. Okay, I'm going to try to get them to remove the Archon with their instant speed removal spell. I'd rather have the cards than the Pegasus tokens, as I'm guessing our opponent has a bunch of cards that blow up the board and do all kinds of things like that. They found their fourth land. They have nothing to do. Will they play the Murderous Rider, just to say they have a 2-3? Bell Haunt. All right, I'm going to discard Shatter the Sky because I don't think it will be very important in this matchup. And because I'll draw another. That's why. Obvious. But now we can turn our birth into a card because we lined it up with a Satessin champion. And that is a pretty good draw. 
Tempting to hold on to that land to discard to the next bell haunt, but for the Shatter of the Sky that I just got rid of pretty easily, I'm not worried about it. We need some Elspeth Conquers Death for this matchup, though. Revenge of the Ravens. Ooh. Our opponent's on a different kind of enchantment deck. I did try a prison build with Ethereal Absolution, Revenge of the Ravens, and Calyx. Wasn't as good. Probably didn't. doesn't surprise some of you to hear that. Some of you might be very surprised, but let's drop the Absolution here. Keep playing out the land, and I believe this is worth the attack. With two 1-5s ready. Yeah, get him. Our opponent is black-white, so whether it's Mortify, Elspeth Conquers Death, or a number of other things, they should be able to remove enchantments, which makes Absolution not quite as good. Ooh. Take your pick. If they take the Shatter, it would blow my mind. But yeah, I would take the Calyx. 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 Nah. Cali. We'll just, we'll just say Cali. Us Americans know how to say Cali. Since we hear news about California every day of our lives, whether we live there or not. Ethereal Absolution, probably a good choice. And the opponent says go. Find an Oath of Kaya. We can go for that. The opponent removes this, we still have Cal Calyx on the way. Or we can just go for the Archon, but I think the opponent's going to have their own Wrath. So, don't really want to dive into their Oath, their Kaya's Wrath. So we'll take this off the board, draw a card. You see the opponent sitting on a removal spell of some kind, and there is the Mortify. So they're using that before it goes to the graveyard, so I can't make a 2-2, which, all right. I'll have to live with that. It also saves their Basilica Bell Haunt, which I'm sure has them feeling spicy. See if they want to do anything about this 4-6 coming at them. Nope. All right, the Destiny's Hand. Find me some goodies. I'd rather find more powerful enchantments. Also, do we have enough mana? I can start holding this for the next Basilica Bell Haunt. Where there's one, there's always four. It's like a law of deck building, and they usually need to add some freaking rats, too. Ritual of Soot. Oopsie. Didn't see that one coming for some reason. Think of the damage you are causing. There's Elspeth Conqueror's death. Okay, let's see what we find. Nothing. Love a good nothing. Alright, let's do it. Let's exile this bell haunt. It's annoying. Make the opponent put a, pre a presence on the board and let the Elspeth Conqueror's Death get us back this, uh, this Atessan champion at some point to draw more cards. Also might just minus Calyx into the graveyard. Can get him back. Calyx. Jeez. The Great Debate comment. Which is it? Alright. Well, I guess I have to give you a card. Unless I want to give up one of my sweet sweet cards here. So do I exile this troll? Seems fine. Under the Oath of Kaya. We can play the Absolution. We can also play the Archon, which I think is a little better. Hope the opponent doesn't blow up the Elspeth Conqueror's death. I really do want the Destiny's Hand back. Give me my hand back. They still have so many cards. I guess they just haven't drawn any land. Yeah, it feels like I've drawn a lot more cards, and it's not mattering. All right, Kaya's Wrath. Crush it all. Let's pick you. 
Loyalty. Plus. Another Elspeth conquers death. The patterned future appears before me. I could play this out. But there's nothing to really hit. We could start making 1-1s. One That's okay. But hitting the Revenge of the Ravens isn't a priority for me. So I'm going to hold these. Just make a 1-1. One -one. Just start making a board presence. Seems better. We can always boost them if we need to. So obnoxious. I'm sure that's what they think of me too, though. All the murderous riding. All of them. Okay, and all the mortifies. I think I'll let the opponent attack me for eight. By the way, it makes this uh, ethereal absolution a lot better. Fine. Not that worried about the damage. The reason I sacrificed to the troll last time was because I was worried about the power, uh, uh, about my planeswalker, protecting my planeswalker. 8-8 eight, eight, trample attacking a planeswalker will usually get it done. All right, let's do this while the opponent's tapped low. They're at 14, but they have Revenge of the Ravens, so. This would get like one damage in, but we're better off doing nothing, I think. I'm still holding a land for the next Basilica Bell Haunt. If you guys are wondering why I don't play it. And we have Archon into Elspeth Conquers Death next turn. So, decline. You want to attack? Go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We could try to block, but nah. Down to 12. Now here come some other things. Some one twos. <laughs> some some baby murderous riders. And there is an oath of Kaya. Lovely. So we can play this Archon. I still have something. Is it a D Spark? Might be. Exile the troll. We get to draw. Nice. Okay, we don't want to run anything into a potential D spark, but this would survive even if they have it. So the champion can attack. Okay, they better have another Wrath for this board. Slowly, slowly whittled them down, taking away their toys. What you got? It's usually around the double absolution time that they pack it in. No black source, but maybe we'll find one. Regardless, we Ramp into Shatter and Elspeth Conquers Death, so that's pretty good. Not a Black Source. There's a Black Source. Witch's Oven. Ooh. Don't have many ways to deal with that whatsoever. But we found our Black Card, so. Alright, from here. The Tessin Champion probably next turn. I don't know what my opponent's really up to and if it plays well against that. Let's let go of the Shatter the Sky. They don't seem like they're the type who's trying to rush me down right away. But if they're the Nightmare Shepherd type, they could be a pain. So let's see, see if they've got their Murderous Rider ready to ready to roll. I guess Drag to the Underworld wouldn't be bad right here either.
Another rat. Gross. Okay. I'll find other lands. I have faith. Grim Physician. That's different. That's different. So the opponent's trying to find all the ways to use the Nightmare Shepherd, I'm guessing. All right, let's put this over here. Draw ourselves a card. Play our land with some shock value and our Oath of Kaya. Now we could point it at one of these creatures, but if we do, we won't gain the life. So I'm going straight to the face. And I've got a 3-5. Does the opponent want to block it? Probably. We probably need to be a little bit aggressive here. If they get enough time, it will cause us a problem. They'll, they'll go get Grey Merchant and do all this other obnoxious stuff. And Lurker. That's really unfortunate. But I guess the birth is the worst card. Our opponent is committed to being the most annoying deck possible. Yeah, okay. I guess I'll get rid of Elspeth Conqueror's death. Archon of Sun's Grace can help beat them down. And they hold back everything. Well, let's play this. plot of blocking all of my creatures. Or, yeah, they were gonna, like, try to gang five for one on the champion if I attack there, so you don't want to do that. There's our opponent's Grey Merchant. Down to ten. But we can regain that. Archon is ready to work. One, two, one, two, three, four. I think best to play Elspeth Conquer's Death, although actually we don't have a creature in the graveyard to get back. Maybe we want to save that for a Nightmare Shepherd? No, we just have to get the Grey Merchant off the board in case they draw into a Nightmare Shepherd. Trigger, trigger, trigger! Into the oven with you, Merchant. Another Archon. Looking good for next turn. One, two, three, four, five, and this trigger would be six, but all their devotion would be gone. Let's do it. If the opponent wants to gang block to get the champion off the board, we can get it back soon with Elspeth Conquer's death, and their devotion falls to almost nothing, which I think is their only real win con, is drawing more gray merchants. But we want to make sure these are near the top. And this one can stay at the bottom. And I guess they just figured out also they only have they have six damage but only if i kill the physician which i don't have to do so if i put that at the back they never get the minus one minus one because they already use their oven so that's what the oops and the concession were i didn't even have to trade my champion as long as i put the physician at the back of the damage time for mom spaghetti you get one shot at ranked you've been you've been smashing it up so let's see what you can do out there with the tryhards. Let's see, let's see how you play against mono red, is basically what I'm saying. Mono red or fires. And we're on the draw. Oops. I messed up everybody. Team vents. Maybe it is fires. We can bottom this. We've got plenty of green and white sources, and the births give us all kinds of lands. Don't think we're any good against fires, if it is fires. Seems like fires can just run away with tempo on us, unless we, like, really hit him with Elspeth Conquer's death perfectly. Yeah, I guess this is another birth. Don't feel like our deck is really doing its thing. I guess they both produce white. 
So trying to figure out which land to play, I don't think it matters. Fires of Invention. Oh, Sphinx of Foresight. Interesting. What do you guys suppose? Giving them those scries and letting them get a better draw, that's not good for us. Let's hit the Banishing Light button. But this is too much land without one of our payoffs. And an Oath of Kaya that's not doing anything. Well, they said, they said go. And our, our draw is still, still not good. I think I'm going to hold on to this birth to cycle with something like a Satessin Champion when I draw it. Or an Archon. Last thing I'd want to do is draw an Archon next turn and have no cards to play with it, no enchantments to play with it to get value out of it right away. The opponent's thinking about a giant. Why wouldn't they have done that on their turn? Probably not. Okay, they're going to Castle Scry their way out of this draw into something more lovely. Two to the top. Oh boy. That's not fires. I don't know what is. Cavalier of Flame, good, good choice. Wheel the awkward cards out of their hand. <laughs> Three Deafening Clarions and an Aether Gust. We were doing so good. Their draw was probably worse possible, but as soon as they got to play the Cavalier, we got wrecked. All right, we'll throw one of you under the bus. Doesn't have Trample. Then we need to exile Fires. I think that's the play. Next turn we have Calyx and Oath, so yeah. Let's play you, take out you. Great, awesome, love it, love it. Interesting, not what I expected. They hit my Archon, which they'll get to play next turn. Um, actually, no, we can take out the Robber. So, we go like this. Hold that. Go like this. Use the minus three to exile this. Hello? Click? Thank you. And slow that Cavalier down. If the Cavalier attacks Calyx, 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 I will throw him under the bus so fast with an Elspeth Conqueror's Death about to pop off. Oh my god. Really? Really? That's... Well... Well... What could you do, everybody? What on earth could we do? Getting wrecked by fires is now the new tradition here on the show. Ooh, are they going to forget? I think they just forgot. So do I throw this under the bus for six, for four health? I don't think so. Not while this has trample, and it won't have trample next turn when I take out Kenrith. Taking out Ken, like, powering up Cal Calyx there is a big miss. Not a good play. So what do we do? You? Or you or you? It's gotta be you, right? I guess we'll throw you under the oath as well and hope the opponent never draws to fairy to bounce it. I can play the birth, which puts another wall on deck. And I can play the Absolution. But I really want to save this to go with something that procs from enchantments. So let's play you. And you. Okay. The opponent didn't upkeep Scry. This is a raw top deck. And it's not Teferi. Those oath triggers might really help, but we're blocking. 
Really hope for another Elspeth Conqueror's death when I hit this button. They're full control playing me, but why? There must be some instant here, and maybe they forgot they have fires down? Let's see what we hit. Yes. Look skyward and receive the gifts of the gods. So we play you, we can take out the cavalier, we can take out the fires. The cavalier right now is threatening to take Calyx down. The ethereal absolution can make a blocker for four, but not for five. If we shatter, they get to draw a card, and it deals no damage to our Calyx. I don't like them drawing that card either. I feel like I've got to get the fires gone. And I can deal with the Cavalier later. Besides, if they take the Calyx out, it can come back. So the real question now, do we play another Oath of Kai to gain some life and try not to lose here? Because we're going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If they have another Cavalier, then we're not dead. Alright, then I'm going to play you. Opponent on that itchy trigger finger. You know they've wanted that scry. They've wondered what's on top of their deck. They keep one on top. Is it Teferi? The long-awaited Teferi is here. Okay, and I'm dead. Um, yeah, getting top deck wrecked is now just, by Jeskai Fires, is now the pattern of the channel. This is now exactly the play pattern of the channel. I cannot beat them. They're dr they, they are amazing at ripping the cards. Wait, why am I at one? Is that an oops? Oh my gosh. Is there a creature in the... There's no land in the graveyard. There's no land in the graveyard. So this shatter... This, this cavalier won't kill me. Okay. Feel like I'm being trapped. Okay, so we play Oath of Kaya. We take Teferi down. We minus you. We exile the Fires of Invention. We put it back under the Oath of Kaya. Send you back to the graveyard. I accept my Return to your place, interloper. And watch the opponent rip another Cavalier Flame. Right? That's how it works. Yeah, that's how it works. Every time. Can't miss. Can't miss. Oh my gosh, it's heartbreaking. But, I like the deck. I am not surprised it can't hang with Jeskai Fires. There's no instance, and they play endless haste things. So, as heartbreaking as these games are, I think the outcome is pretty normal. And I wouldn't play this if you actually care about ranked. But it is kind of a fun, different take on control in prison, and it's probably the best that Calyx can do right now. So, I wouldn't change much, and I just would steer far clear of ladder, unless you want outcomes like this. Um, but yes, thank you for watching this video. And as always, I will see you in the next video.
Goodbye.